Hello there, welcome. Hello, welcome. Hi there. Hello everyone. Thanks for joining in. I'm just gonna do a little bit of warm up while waiting for a few more people to come in before we start. Hi there. How's everyone doing? I was rushing back from my my father's home because I went to see him today and um, spend some time with him at home and uh, well in Hong Kong at night the traffic was not very good I was rushing a lot and I just make it on time <laughs> so I'm back here at home sitting I thought I might have to rush all the way back to the studio because it's closer um, to where I was getting off the bus <laughs> but I managed to get home. So today we're going to learn how to, um, we're going to learn how to uh, write the I and J, alphabet I and J. So for those who are new to this uh, kind of like a study room, uh, my name is Carlo, I'm from Hong Kong and uh, I am uh, this month and actually next month I'm sharing the, using the copy sheets uh, that I have produced recently it's the let me show you so for those who already know please bear with me and I know a few of you are brand new to my study room so this is the um, the copy sheets that you get with all the A alphabets um, A to Z and uh, also inside a packet you will have the exemplar so you should have the exemplar which is all in the uh, in different groups so let me show you so this is all in different groups maybe I'll do a vertical one first and of course in a like a normal sequence A to Z now the reason why we are practicing using our groups so in the previous Wednesdays we already did A M N A M N and they belong to the um, push stem group because you can see here is the push stem okay push stem and then this is also push stem and we already did the um, group 2 v w h k z so if you're new today we are going to do group 3 so this is a very tiny group um, it's i and j but there's still quite a lot of things to explain to you um, because uh, even though it looks very simple but there are still quite a lot of details that I want to share with you. Um, now, let me put this down first. Now, when I'm writing, I will use this blank sheet because it's easier for, for me to demonstrate. But if you buy the packet, the copy sheets packet that I uh, just showed you, you will be able to see these practice paper with group two, you know, all the different groups in alphabet, uh, in, in the group order. And also you get um, the pages printed for the whole page for letter A and the whole page for letter B, etc. So it's quite a big packet with lots of information. Um, so now, because I'm doing demonstration, I will be using this one. It's a little bit easier for everyone to see. Cool. Let's just kick start. Now for letter I and J, you will notice that this group, we call it the, it actually has the name is cat's eye. It looks like a cat's eye. So if you look at letter I and J, um, you will notice that um, you will have, this is the key stem. Now, some people call this a capital stamp or a majuscule stamp. I usually say a capital stamp. I also like to call it um, the line of universal beauty because this is a key line that um, a lot of the capital letters will have. 
meaning that this line repeats in most of the capitals. And I will show you um, how to draw this line. So we call it the line of universal beauty. It's like a beauty line. And uh, the cat's eye group contains mainly the letter I and J. And for the cat's eye, what it is, is this shape here. Okay, it's actually a little bit pointy. It looks a bit pointy, but it comes down with a curve and come up and it forms an oval. Now, letter I and J looks very similar. Basically, they have a very uh, similar structure, more or less if it's from the um, waistline above. So this is the waistline. Anything above the waistline is exactly the same. The main difference is you have the line of universal beauty that comes all the way down became this becomes the descender loop okay now it is important to really uh, learn them together because it helps you to see the proportion when i i remember when i first started um doing calligraphy i wasn't very sure you know where's the baseline where's everything so today i'm going to explain a little bit more detail so you can get to understand it better okay now so first of all i would like to show you the line of universal beauty now this is the line that well as is mentioned by the name universal so it actually is always existing in most of the alphabets and in the past we already did the h and k now let me re revisit the alphabet to show you so if you look at the h Okay, you have, first of all, in the letter H, you have this shape, and then it will follow by Okay, a little bit too heavy. Um, this is Now this line right here, so we start with a double entry um, entry stroke. Now this one is the same as this, okay? So we are usually, um, we can use the short form, okay, L-O-U-B. So it's the line of universal beauty. So notice this already existed in the letter H and from last week we did the letter K so it also exists in the letter K so you have so this is a ball terminal Now with this, you can either connect it, um, extend it into a ball terminal, or you can keep it just like that. Okay, so again, you will see that in letter K, this line right here, it's the line of universal beauty. Now in order to fully understand this line, the best way to practice is by using um, guideline. Now in copper plate or Engrosse script, the angle that or the degree that we have for the slant is a 55 degree slant okay so that's a standard 55 now when we do the line um, of universal beauty first of all i'll write it out first Okay, now I did a few because usually it takes some time to really warm up. The third one, by far, um, it's a little bit more, I'm more satisfied with it. So we start with a curve. Now notice this curve, it comes from the right hand side coming down from here, down. And I slowly adding a little bit more pressure here. It start with a hairline, okay, it start with a hairline, so I'll write HL. 
and you're adding a little bit more pressure and in the center you want this to be the heaviest weight so in the center meaning around this like area it has the heaviest shade and as you go down you have less pressure and back to a hairline okay so i always say a ttt so you really start with thin thickest and back to thin so you can say ttt as an easier uh, representation of uh, gradation of pressure okay now in order to achieve this you need to start with a very light pressure almost like basically none with hairline you literally just like no pressure okay like a thin line and then out of course slowly you add a little bit more pressure that will allow the nip to slightly open the left okay maybe i'll use this pen to represent so you start with the hairline the shade gradually open up here and has the widest point in the center sorry it's not very nicely done okay let's try maybe i'll use this sorry i have a little bit of shaky hand from running to go home okay so if you look at here it's a better diagram right so notice that you have a hairline getting a little bit thicker the thickest in the center now when i say the thickest it doesn't mean you need to put your maximum pressure it just means that you need to allow this becomes the thickest of the whole line okay so it really depends on the size of your calligraphy so if you're writing um, smaller than um, compared to a larger scale of uh, uh, of another alphabet the smaller scale alphabet should have a narrower um, shade here okay as the alphabet gets bigger you need to make it wider okay just to make it look proportional because otherwise you can get a very tall size um, calligraphy and then it's very skinny and then it looks a little bit imbalanced unless that's the style you're trying to create now this is the widest point and then the point the widest point area okay so around here and then you're slowly getting thinner and back to a hairline okay now this also if you notice this curve so back to here this curve it will create an oval so this also bring you back an oval so technically this line when you make it parallel to the slant so i'm sorry i'm just hand drawing hand drawing this line so assume this is accurate 55 you will also notice that you will have a tiny little triangle okay so this t triangle it's represents how much you turn here now if you get too narrow meaning not curvy enough this triangle becomes very small this is a good size of a triangle this is your negative space so it can be a great indication okay now moving to this so if i'm using a nib pretend i'm using a nib and the line should like that then of course you have gradation of pressure so the nib kind of opens up here and get to the widest point okay so that's the standard um, kind of like a sim um, kind of simple information of the line of universal beauty okay uh, now let's tr go back to try with a nip now if you're writing with me if you don't have the guideline paper that provided here um, in the in the copy pack that um, 
from a copy bag, you can have create your own guidelines. You can use a com uh, like a ruler. For example, this ruler have the fifty five degrees slant, and then you can just put lines. Okay. Having a guide really helps because you can practice. Okay. Now, the key is when you're practicing, you need to really think about your um, the results, right? Otherwise, it's hard to get improvement. Now, notice the first one that I did to show you has a little bit heavier weight in the bottom. Don't know if you can see it. Let me keep it a little bit flatter. Okay, put it on top. Do you see the weight here? It's heavier. Now this one has a more, a little bit more even. It still has a little bit heavier weight, but it looks comparatively this is a better shade, right? Now sometimes, of course, you can touch up as well. So for example, you can make it a little bit more. Thicker. Now I just literally draw a line on the right hand side and then immediately the widest point looks like it's thicker already. And if you want to of course check whether it is accurate, you can put the guideline down, right? Just dissect it and you can see whether you have the negative space of triangle on the top and the bottom. And you can see whether you can extend it into an oval. Okay, so this is a curve. Okay. Now, with the line of universal beauty as a capital stamp, as we said, we use it for H and K uh, from last time, right? So, the capital stamp can add a ball terminal. So what it means is, sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to find a spot. Okay, what I mean is, you come up, curve, and draw this ball shape. Now notice that the ball shape is coming up above the baseline. Make sure it's not close to the baseline it's almost halfway through you see the height it's half of the x height almost and then it's in a ball shape now traditionally from the scenario menu you will see teardrop shapes i think i mentioned it previously you will see um teardrop shape you will see um a ball terminal uh, i prefer a ball terminal you can practice a teardrop shape which let me see if I can. I haven't finished this. Sorry. So after you curl up, make a round shape and you press and it should fill in with ink. Okay, I'll do one more time of this. Sorry, there's a piece of hair on the nip. So I will use a tissue and remove it. Now, it tends to be quite easy, even for me, like heavier at the bottom, especially when I'm nervous or when I'm rushing or when I'm just warming up. Um, so next time, you cut down the pressure earlier. You just have to remind yourself, okay, like you have to fit in a little triangle here as well. This is the point where you reduce pressure. Okay, so this allows you to reduce the pressure a little bit in advance. Now I was saying that there's um, a teardrop shape. So teardrop shape. I'm not very good at that because I don't practice it. You come up and you do this. 
again you fill in like that okay I personally prefer the ball terminal but of course it's, it's up to you I think I didn't do a very good job but if you look at the scenario menu there are um, a lot of examples with teardrop shape okay so to summarize this we have the capital stamp um, so specifically this line specifically this line it's the line of universal beauty okay it's, it's dedicated for this line and this line is also a capital stamp now there are many capital stamps uh, for capital letters um, this is one of the popular one for engrosser script or copper plate um, in Spencerian you have something like this so you may have seen it before right so this is a um, okay so this stamp it's also known as a capital stamp sorry it's very shaky here but if you see so let's say a Spencer and B so that's a capital stamp for B okay so hopefully this give you a little bit better idea of the, uh, the differences uh, in terms of the, the names okay now once we learn the capital uh, the capital stamp or the line of universal beauty it is important that you practice 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 to get a consistency um, in in the in the thickness now one of the thing that i think is tricky for beginners it's the sh the, the amount of pressure now let me explain to you how you can uh, focus on practicing on this so first of all when you're holding on um, the pen holder so this is uh, Michael Sal's pen holder you probably follow um, me on Instagram or on my post I talk about his pens all the time because over the past years I have tried many pen holders some are really really fancy looking but I think e eventually uh, um, you just need a pen that is really practical comfortable for you you don't need to have like a uh, extravagant looking pen unless you're working for event so when i'm practicing when i'm working at the studio for clients i always always use my coast pen now the reason i explain um the reason why i like his pen is because the body here it has um a lovely grip allowing me to rest my 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 finger and my thumb comfortably now some pen holders can be very uh, heavy michael's pens are made of wood um, different types of woods obviously but the wood material generally is a little bit lighter i think you kind of want to stay away from very heavy pen holders because heavy pen holders you get quite tired very quickly um, especially when you're practicing for hours now, the second thing I love this pen holder because there is a little bit of a foot right here at the edge and it goes a little curved so I can place my index finger here and um, it doesn't feel too slippery. Somehow this thing, uh, I think it's called a foot, okay, um, helps my index finger from slipping down. Okay, and when I'm adding pressure, so because the this line the beauty line let's call it the beauty line it's very much about having nice gradation of pressure so you kind of think like this <laughs> i always say this in my class i might have said it on life it's like playing kind of practicing tai chi now i don't practice tai chi but i've seen people in the park or you know in hong kong doing tai chi and you can imagine tai chi is like pushing and in and out almost like this so let's zoom out so imagine my my uh, hand here is the the pen holder and this is my index finger when I'm pressing it's like this okay now it's really a gradation of pressure so at the start because we talk about there's a starting with the hairline so basically where the part is a hairline you have no pressure you want to be as loose as possible now i know that i know that oh i'm 
you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, I know I need to relax, but it's really hard to relax, right?" Because、um, it is not easy. But there are many drills or exercises that can help you. There are many things that can really help you, and maybe one day we can do a live and just talk about that.、Uh, but I think to keep it simple, you need to first of all be、um, sitting in a good posture. Okay, no slouching. Try to sit up. T- Nice and tall, and also、um, you need to be in a relaxed mode. So you're breathing normally, not you know tense or anything. Otherwise, you really can't do a a light or no pressure stroke. So here you have zero pressure. Slowly adding more, so your nips will start to open. Okay, maybe zoom in, and then as you come down, you keep the pressure. You intensify a little bit in the center here, okay. Now, when you pass the waistline, you know that it's time to starting to reduce the pressure because this guideline here is your waistline,、um, or some people say a header, H E A D E R.、Um, it is a indication of where you can start to really think about reducing pressure, right? So you come down with the pressure slowly reducing. And then back to a hairline. So back to a hairline is like back to a point, and you don't add any pressure on your pen holder. Now definitely practice lots and lots of them to get、uh, a little bit more consistent, consistent uh, 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 line. Okay, or this is the line of universal beauty. It's quite a long name. Let's just call the beauty line. Now let's talk about letter I. I have yesterday taken some notes myself because for such a simple alphabet, you would have thought, okay, it is quite straightforward. Now, however, once I sat down and really summarizing the eyes that I've learned, um, there are a few ways to write this, and I hope、uh, I will demonstrate to show you. Now. <laughs> I'm not sure if you ever thought of that, but it is quite fascinating, right? The ductus, the ductus of、um, alphabet. So ductus, D U, T U S. It's the、um, sequence of the strokes. So how,、uh, which line go first? Now, I always say to students that you imagine building the house and you want to build the key column of the house first. So in the letter I, you would know straight away. This line. Is the key column of your house, right? So I want to make the center a little bit wider. So I just draw a little hairline there. Again, this is a little bit heavy at the bottom. I apologize for it.、Um, now. We will then. Draw the left side of the cat eye, which start from here, thin, coming down, adding pressure, and curve, and lift. Now you want to hit this line.、Uh, you want to just have this line、um, stop here because I'm going to jump through because there's a big puddle of wet ink, right? So we want to avoid any ink pools. So then you come out. Now, okay. Now let me write one time without talking first. Okay. Now, as soon as you notice there's a piece of hair, do you see tiny piece of paper fiber? Please remove it and don't be lazy because with that tiny hair or a piece of dust, it will make your hairline a little bit thicker. Curve in and lift. Try to come out. Come out the same direction.、Uh, sorry, like as if it's connected. Okay. So the ductus of this writing is, of course, we build the central um the ca- uh the cap capital stem, or you can say, um the primary shade. Okay, this is the primary shade, and then you start from the left. You come down, lift, then you go up. Okay, you go all the way up with a thin hairline. Now notice that when you go up, you are really aiming 
to form part of an oval. Okay. The other thing that we need to pay attention is you want the left spacing and the right spacing to be balanced. Okay. Let's try it one more time. Okay. Then you ooh, it always pick up the fiber. <laughs> Hong Kong is a very humid place. I don't know in your part of your world. Maybe you can tell me. Um, I noticed that our paper is a little bit moist sometimes. Okay. So this is how you do. So when I come up, my eyes will focus on looking at this point to connect them. So it looks like an illusion, like as if you connect them. And also, as I'm moving up, I have a few things in my mind. I will tell myself to completely relax so that I'll go up with a thin hairline without any pressure. Because you know that once you add pressure, the ink will, um, the nib will split or the nib will go like this. Right? We'll go like this. So we don't want that. So first thing is relax. Now, and also what is in my mind is the spacing. So I will be checking the left space here, the negative space coming up. You want to balance both sides. Okay. Now, so that's what's the first ductus option. You come down and you skip and then you come up. Okay. So let's say this is number two and then three, because one is always the the main, well, let's call the main column, <laughs> column of your alphabet. So it's the line of universal beauty, the beauty line. Okay. Now, I think I will immediately go to, go to um, the next one, the second option. So when you're doing this, you come down, You do the same thing first. Now this time, we repeat the cat's eye. You stop here by lifting. Then you can travel your hand in the air and place your nib at a tiny shade. So I'm a bit shaky still. <laughs> so I would do one more time. So the idea is you travel up but no touching the, the nib not, is not touching the paper. And then you have an idea where the oval is and you come down. And when you come down, you add a light shade. And you go up. Okay, this is a little bit better. Okay, so by doing this, again, we will see the left spacing balance with the right spacing. The main difference uh, compared to the um, first one we did is you notice that our ductus has changed. So this time we will similarly come from two. So meet, this is the starting point you come down number two and then this you coming up oh, sorry oh I'm dreaming coming down okay that is incorrect okay just remove that yes sorry and this is number three now notice one key important elements here when we're doing the uh, beauty line the shade is a little bit heavier than these two shades. We call this the primary shade. Okay. While the second stroke and the third stroke will be, so I'll write number two and number three. It is your secondary. 
Now, it's suggested by the name of it. So when you have a secondary shade, meaning it's not as important as the primary, so primary shade will be heavier. Okay. Now the reason is because if you imagine having all the shade exactly the same width, then it could be a problem because it could make the eye very heavy. Okay. So I think that should be pretty easily understand. Now moving down, I'm gonna just use um, now the last one that you can do. Okay, yeah. So by the way, I did not make up all these um, conductors. So I, I was I did not invent these. Okay, it's just studying from historical script, uh, especially from the Zanari menu. Now we will do the same. Okay, and then the number two is always repeat. Lift. What happened is this time we will skip, but we will continue. And what we can do is we can add the shade coming down. Okay, sorry, there's some water. Maybe when I'm talking. Okay. You do the same, you come up, lift. Now what we do is we're going to come trace back and add the shade down. Okay, so this will look exactly what we just did, the look of it, but the ductus is different. So what happened is we do the first one, the second one, we come all the way Right, and then, of course, you have to jump through the puddle of ink. Here, you kind of skip through. Now, then we do the third one. Here, by adding the synthetic shade. Now, any shade, um, you add it afterwards. It's called synthetic shade. It reminds me of makeup, sin. Synthetic shade. So synthetic shade it's kind of like an after effect in a way. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so let's try this. If you guys have any questions, just let me know. I'll try my best to help. It is not very perfect. And then I will come back to this line, but I don't add pressure immediately. Okay, so I will follow the line, retrace, and add the pressure like that. So it's really light. Although, yeah, I might have. <laughs> make it a little bit messy here so the line should be really thin thick and back to thin okay now notice that when you're checking this slant right here you're checking the slant this is the midpoint is on the slant you can check even if you have the slant, the midpoint here, the middle of this curve is on the 55 degree slant, right? And what else can we check? You can check the spacing, the left spacing, negative space equals more or less to the right. Um, yeah. So this is the third ductus that you can try. I personally, uh, to be very honest, when I am writing the I, if I'm doing the engrosser script, I just use the method one. Wow, do you see? 
this part here. I'll just do this. Because I notice that when I do the eye like that, if I'm writing, for example, name, Okay, I'm sorry, it bleeds a little bit. <laughs> I'm laughing because it could be me as I'm speaking on my page. <laughs> so ignore the bleeding. Sorry about that. But notice when I'm doing an Irene, I have something here. And I, I if I add the shade, I always think it will be like quite heavy. Now, but this is obviously a personal preference. Okay. So you can choose either, either one. Now, one thing I want to add to um, the line of universal beauty is so. What I want to add to it, I hope I can execute this. Now, when you're drawing this line, a lot of people, when they're curving up, maybe they don't curve enough or maybe they curve way too far to the left, right? So that is a method you can try to um, help you to estimate. Um, so I have a piece of paper Okay, this is just a post-it paper. So what I do is I want to find out the X height. So the X height is represented by the dots here, and I'll draw one more. Okay, what you want to know, uh, sorry, what you want to do, this is your X height area, right? So that's number two. So what you want to do next is, of course, you want to put a slant on your alphabet. Now it is still wet. Let's see. Let me do one thing. I have to quickly dry it by cheating. Okay, now what we do is we grab a pencil. You want to put the slant. By the way, if you're intrigued by this ruler, this is designed by um, a calligrapher called Aquino. Okay, it provides the 55 degree. And of course, you can find... Now make sure, of course this is, oh, the light. Make sure this is aligned to the, the um, baseline. And... Okay, so what I'm trying to do is to find out this distance, okay? So earlier we have this page, okay? It's not exactly accurate, but it's close enough. <laughs> it is close enough. So this curve, it's approximately twice of your X height. Where do I get the uh, ruler? Oh, I sell them in my shop. So it's available, sorry, it's available on uh, my website. It's about, I think the cost was 70 Hong Kong dollars, so maybe 9 US dollars. It is great because it um, has all these little holes where you can uh, line guidelines. And it's very easy to use, it comes with a guide. Uh, as in reference. Now anyway, so you can see this is about 2x height width. Now I don't think you need to like memorize it, but if you are practicing and if you write something, for example, let me show you how you can analyze your writing, which is helpful when you're practicing on your own. So if you're doing something like this, okay, 
okay now you may think oh that's something incorrect or something that doesn't look too right um, maybe you can tell yourself well sorry about the shade <laughs> now let's talk about the length you can probably think is this too long you know or you know something doesn't look too right you can use the same method get a piece of paper find out your your x height and make it twice and then double check on it now you can see clearly it should be a little bit more here because it's on a slant right so if i imagine the slant here so start from here yeah about here and it curved just by a tiny bit longer okay so you can use this method to help you to check now of course if you make it too short it will look weird as well so i've seen some beginners maybe do something like this or just a tiny little scoop the reason it doesn't look too nice is because it's not very proportional right when you have this curve you come up you see this is your oval right and suddenly this oval becomes very narrow and hence it doesn't look very balanced so, so you start off with a nice big oval again similarly this is even smaller <laughs> i always think this looks like a snail <laughs> or like dragging a trolley or something mini buggy the little wheels on the mini buggy okay so this is how you can kind of evaluate now with such a big curve the starting point should be maybe more curvy to balance it do you see now okay i have a big oval here then it balance with the base and I think when you're practicing, don't be afraid to do dot 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 around like this. Um, because you will be surprised by dotting it, you really start to see the oval better. better. Okay, now if you see here, if I try dotting this, do you see how big the oval is and how small the oval here? Okay, so in my traditional manner i'll put a sad face meaning this is not ideal again this is sad face oops sorry and of course this is also frowning but this is better okay now this is very important because it makes your i and j better and basically a lot of other alphabets and i'm sorry last time i did not talk about this in letter h and k because that was a focus on the double turn and double turn entry um was my initial focus okay now let me change the paper um also this is a way that i will always like is a grab a new sheet right let's find a new paper and i always have some cushion paper so currently i have two pieces of cushion paper okay my table is um a wood board because i set up for my demonstration i put a board just to make the table uh um, the table height relative to my seat now what i'm doing sorry completely <laughs> forgot to show you is i will use these magnets um i designed these magnets it has the japanese sumi ink because i correct homeworks for students using orange ink and the color make art um oblique pen holders i'm pretty proud of these look at that <laughs> yeah but of course you don't have to buy them you may already have them at home you um you can use if you have children you know they may have these magnetic bookmarks already because it's inspired by the stationery uh, or you can use paper clips but personally i think paper clips it's a little bit uh less convenient because you need to open it and sometimes my nails uh cannot 
you know maybe too too short. So I I find this is a lot more practical and efficient. Regarding this my cushion paper blotting paper, um oh, so cushion paper I'm just using a uh, simple printing paper. Make sure your uh cushion paper is smooth. So what it means by smooth is do not have any texture on it. Not watercolor paper. Not handmade paper or not even paper that has been written on before because when you have written on um, the paper there will be some dent so it's not smooth and regarding to blotting paper i think you mean um guard paper now some calligraphers when they practice they put a separate sheet of paper at the base like covering the writing i don't tend to do that because I'm not a very uh, sweaty person, but maybe summertime when it's extremely hot, yes, I might. Or if I know that I've already put hand cream, I will put a separate piece of paper just to avoid my forearms, uh, the oil on my forearm touching the page. Because you know that if oil gets on the paper, it doesn't really blend well with your ink because all the inks that we use, uh, I would say 99%, right, are uh, water-based ink. Okay. Now, let's do letter J. So, how's the time? Cool. One hour. <laughs> Soon, right? No problem. Thank you for your question. I think I have seven minutes because I lock on, on time. So, let's do... Or should I just stop here? Because <laughs> I can start a new one. Maybe I'll continue and see how much I can go. So, I'll... Do it now j once you have done the i it becomes a little bit easier because the doctors um the doctors uh it's the same uh it's the same style basically you can do method one method two method three so the first one now this is a little bit tricky so you want to start a long beauty line so it start from here let's let me try thin thicker thickest Back to thin. Okay, not very good. Let me warm up one more time. Okay, this is better. Now the difference is this line is still heavy. Usually this is a, a continuous kind of like issue for me or for most people. I think the initial, uh, sorry, the immediate solution for it is to talk to your index finger, like really focus on that. As you're coming down, don't just thinking about coming down, thinking about adding pressure gradually, more pressure in the center, and then um, cut down the pressure once you pass. In this case, it's past the baseline, okay? And you can always add a tiny triangle here as a reminder, well, the triangle is in your head. This is where you reduce pressure, okay? Now, sorry, once you've done this, this is still the line of universal beauty and it begins with the hairline. Get a thicker center area about here. It's the widest, meaning the thickest of the whole line and then you back to thinner and back to hairline don't forget there's a hairline at the beginning and end now also um this is actually the longest shade in all uh the magiscares all the capitals okay so after you've done that this is your descend loop now as i'm coming down i usually come up straight away you can consider lifting here and relax and go up but by stopping here, sometimes it could be problematic to connect it perfectly, okay? Once you have done that, you can do a, a synthetic shade. Now, last time we talked about having a synthetic shade, meaning an add-on effect shade, here will help to balance the alphabet. Because when you have a long descender uh, or a, a sen ascender, the top part without any shade can be very skinny looking and by adding this shade it helps to 
uh, help your eyes travel back to the center. It's like suggesting to look that way, as in going up from here to upwards. And also it helps to make it feel firmer, the alphabet. Now, so that's down and up. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I talk a lot. Now, this is the easy part because it's exactly the same, the cat's eye. You start here, lift, come up. Okay, when you come up, make sure left and right are balanced. Okay. Of course, sorry, I completely forgot to come out. Now let me write once without talking, and then I'll probably pause this. I'll come up, lift, come out. Like that. Well, sorry, I tend to forget this shade. So, suggestingly is after you do the descender loop you add it on immediately then you move on to the cat's eye okay if i forgot no worries no one knows the sequence i mean then i'll just add it back <laughs> now if you don't mind i'm gonna stop right here because i'm coming back immediately i just need to save this so it's on the igtv and you can revisit um the demo so hopefully you come back i hope there was no missing questions um, I didn't look through. But if you do have question, you can shoot me the question in the next session. Thank you for staying. I'll be back immediately. Thank you. Bye.